white female police officer who had just gotten off duty, was still in uniform. She returned to her apartment complex and for whatever reason had to park on a higher level of the parking garage than she normally did. Now, according to her account of things, that she walked in at this higher level and walked in, you know, the apartment building, one apartment on different floors, looks very much like the others, walked in and walked to what she believed was her apartment, noticed that she arrived at the door, that the door was not fully shut, opened the door and saw a figure inside of the, what she said she indicated was her apartment. And after entering, um, tried to, you know, try to, uh, as she indicated, um, get the, the person who was a black man sitting in the apartment to raise their arms and uh, so that she could, I guess, arrest them. According to her account, the man made a move towards her and she fired and the man died. The interesting thing about this, this became national news, this particular case, and there was a lot of concern about what the outcome would be regarding it. And in the end, the, the jury came back with a uh, guilty of murder conviction. And that was where I thought, for the most part, the news about this case was going to end. What was interesting, though, was to come next. Because in the sentencing phase of this, something very interesting took place. That one of the things that's, I guess, common, not like I've seen a lot of murder trials, that they have a, uh, a sentencing phase where there is some uh, quick or uh, impact statements that are taken. And a number of people got up and um, said what this, you know, this case meant to them. Then all of a sudden, the 18-year-old brother of the man who was murdered got up on the stand. And what he said was truly amazing. He got on the stand, and the first thing that he said was that he forgives her. And then went on to say that he wished nothing but the best for her. And then just ask that she would give her life to Christ. He said if it was in his power, that he would let her go free. Then, turning to the judge, who happened to be um, a black woman, asked if he could go and give the person who killed his brother a hug. The judge didn't answer immediately, so he asked again. And then she said yes, and he got up and saw the man start walking over, and the defendant now runs up, and the two of them hug in the middle of the courtroom. As they're going, as he's going by, the camera pans, and you can see the judge. And the judge was crying. Then after this hug took place, the judge comes down and gives a hug to the defendant and hands her her own personal Bible and opens it to John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he has sent his only son so that it may not perish, but have eternal life. And said, this is where you should begin. And this particular video has gone, you know, it, many of you have probably seen it on the news, been all over the internet, and it talks a lot about the power of forgiveness. That 
someone who was so greatly affected, this 18-year-old man who had lost his brother, was willing to forgive in that way. The question becomes, where does that strength come from? And I think the answer, he answered that question himself when he indicated to her that he wished that she would turn her life over to Christ. Our gospel reading began with the apostles asking Jesus to do something for them. Basic little statement. Increase our faith. And Jesus' response to that is, if you had the faith the size of a mustard seed, you'd be able to say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. It's talking that there's a power of faith that is real. Now, I don't know of any particular cases where somebody had faith strong enough where this literally took place. But to say that faith does not have power would be a tragic misstatement. It's only because the faith that this man professed that he was able to forgive the killer of his brother. His demonstration of faith led to a demonstration of faith by the very judge of the trial, who herself came down to hug this defendant and wanting to desire to pass on her faith, handing over the Bible, say, beginning with John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he sent his only Son, not that it may not perish, that they may have eternal life. Faith can do amazing things. There are true power invested in it. How many times I've been privileged to see people who have received horrible diagnosis but have been able to withstand that with a positive attitude while they continue to fight, they trust in God's plan for them. In times I've been able to see families in the aftermath of tragedies who have been able to overcome what would crush other people because of the faith that they have. Faith has the power. We come here as a people of God as a community of believers, a people of faith. And we ask the same question that the apostles asked. Increase our faith. Because faith matters to us. Faith can move literal, figurative mountains if we let it. It's all about our trust and what we truly believe. If we believe that God has sent his Son, not that we may perish, but that we may have eternal life, that opens up to us a much greater reality. The strength of that faith can overcome any obstacle. Anything that counters our way, God can overcome it if we just believe. Increase our faith, the Apostle said. And through that, Mountains.